clock is ticking on the government to approve or reject a major LNG project. Pacific Northwest LNG is a $36 billion liquefied gas and export facility on BC's north coast. The project has been under scrutiny for the carbon emissions it would produce, but also the potential impact on the salmon habitat in, on the coast. The proponents say the project is necessary to create jobs and boost the economies. The federal government has until October 2nd to give it a green light, but we are expecting an announcement today. So, should they in fact green light it? Joining me now from the foyer of the House of Commons, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change, Jonathan Wilkinson, Shannon Stubb, the Conservative Deputy Natural Resources Critic, and Guy Canon, NDP Finance Critic. Good to see you all. Appreciate you being here. Hi, Thank you. So, Mr. Wilkinson, I'm guessing you're probably not going to tell me what uh, the Cabinet <laughs> decided today. <laughs> Uh, prob probably not. Probably not. Okay, so if you're not going to do that, uh, and that's probably a wise decision if you want to keep your job, uh, tell me what tell me tell me what factored into the decision about whether this LNG project will get the green light or no. What are the things the government had to weigh? <clears throat> <clears throat> sure. I mean, uh, you know, the energy sector is an important driver of economic growth in this country. Um, but we've said that any energy projects that are to proceed forward need to be done in a sustainable manner. And in the case of Pacific Northwest, the big issues were, um, does it actually have a significant negative impact on the salmon habitat? Because this is the third just largest salmon run in B.C. Um, what, what about Aboriginal consultation, First Nations consultation, and has that actually taken place and has it been appropriate? And then, of course, how does this fit, uh, given that it will be additive from a climate uh, greenhouse gas perspective? How does it fit within the overall architecture of, uh, of the government's commitment to climate? And so the government has had to look at those issues and weigh them. Uh, we asked for a three-month extension to ensure that we actually were gathering the appropriate scientific data and, uh, and looking at all of these various issues in order to make an informed decision that's based on science, data, and and, uh, and uh, indigenous knowledge. Okay, so that's a good starting point. Let's get everybody else to weigh in and then and then dig into some of those issues you talked about. Shannon Stubbs, uh, your leader says the government has no choice. It should say yes to this. Why? Why does? Why do the Conservatives believe it has to be a yes? And what about some of those issues there that John was talking about, indigenous groups and others? Well, we will applaud the Liberal government if they accept a recommendation for approval of the Pacific Northwest LNG project. It's important for jobs. It allows Canada to be an important contributor to the world of a clean energy source. It will offset emissions in other parts of the world from energy producing countries. We know in fact that the support for the Pacific Northwest LNG project has been overwhelming among the government of British Columbia, among First Nations, among the I'm not sure it's BC been overwhelming Chamber. amongst First Nations groups. I'm not sure yeah. that's, that's true. They have, there, ha there have been op opposition uh, among First Nations groups and other activists, but the majority of the First Nations in the area support the project, and that predates even the the election campaign. So support from the BC government, from the city of Fort St. John, from the BC Chamber of Commerce, and from First Nations in the area predate all the way even back to 2011. So we uh, will applaud the Liberal government if they approve this project. We know it's important for jobs and for responsible energy development, which Canada already has a world leading track record of being second to none on the planet. Okay, I mean, the use, just to, to be clear, the Union of BC uh, Chiefs, uh, Grand Chief Stuart Phillips, for one, has serious concerns about the project, particularly. Uh, uh, the, the skein of salmon, although the the, the, the um the environmental assessment that was done by the assessment agency said that they didn't believe that this would be a threat to, to fish. But anyway, what, let, let's and put additional the, studies were allowed into the process recently. Well, and there, there's a final report that we have not seen that cabinet has based their decision on. So we'll, we'll put all that aside for a moment. And Guy Caron, let, let me uh, get your perspective on how important this project is or what your concerns are around it. Well, you just raised actually two of the biggest concerns I have on this. Uh, we're talking about the uh, possibility of endangering the second largest wild salmon watershed in British Columbia. Uh, this is actually problematic and many, many scientists actually came with the fact that uh, this danger is actually not hypothetical. It, it would actually be uh, a real threat. But, but uh, the fact that the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency says it is not a threat, that doesn't reassure you? Which is my second concern okay. actually and the second point I was getting at is yes. that this, this report has come through uh, uh, basically uh, uh, a lot of criticism from various scientists. We've seen last spring 130 scientists that actually came doubting that uh, this report was actually factually, scientifically factually uh, based. Uh, and we're talking about uh, the, the, the director of the Coastal Science 
uh, and uh, assessment at Simon Fraser uh, University. We're talking about the former chief of uh, habitat assessment at uh, Fisheries and Oceans. So those people know what they're talking about and they do believe that uh, the environmental assessment report was actually flawed. And, and it was a draft report, I should point yes. out, but it was, I guess, to give some initial guidance to everybody. And there's a final report now that has been yeah. part of the, the decision now. So, John, Jonathan Wilkinson, let me bring you back in. What, what, what would the government say about those direct concerns about wildlife in the area and fish in the water? Well, I think those are very legitimate concerns. Uh, and, uh, and one of the reasons why we, we granted a, a three-month extension was to ensure that we actually were looking at all of the concerns that have been raised, including by a number of of uh, external scientists to ensure that we understood the extent to which there would be impact on, on the salmon run. Um, I think it's clear that you know the British Columbia government and, and the federal government would, would be very reluctant to permit a project if we thought there would be significant adverse impacts on salmon. And so understanding that issue and making sure that we were very clear on the science is a very important piece that will inform uh, a decision. How, how, do, how do you factor in the, uh, the, the emissions that would come from this project, given that you are also on the verge of trying to ratify the Paris Agreement, trying to come up with a climate change plan with provinces? How, how can you do all of those things? Well, I mean, the, the climate piece and greenhouse gases, again, are very relevant to the, to the consideration that Cabinet has given this project. And, uh, and ultimately, the government will need to be clear on how, uh, if, if it was going to approve the project or if it was going to turn it down, um, how the greenhouse gas element fits in the context of the commitments we've made to Paris and to the targets in Paris. Ultimately, we are, we are committed to those targets, and irrespective of the decision that's made here, we are committed to those targets. Okay. Uh, Shannon Stubbs, do, what, what, do you, what do you think? Does that, if the government is committed to those targets, committed to a climate change plan with the provinces, can it still legitimately go ahead with a, a, a project like this one? Well, the government's going to need to account for that. But what I want to focus on is the importance of LNG and of responsible energy development to the Canadian economy, to the hundreds of thousands of Canadians whose livelihoods depend on responsible energy development in Canada, of which we have a world-leading track record and have for decades. In fact, representatives from private companies as well as from state-owned energy producing, producing countries all around the world have traveled to Canada consistently over the past several decades to learn about our regulatory standards, our approval process, this is our best practices, our enforcement, and our performance as responsible energy developers. Okay, so but what we'll applaud yeah. the Liberal government if they, if they approve the Pacific Northwest But if, the, if the government says go ahead to the LNG project here and then says, hey, we're going to wait on those other pipelines, namely Kinder Morgan, Northern Gateway, then what? Is that enough to sustain the energy sector um, out west or, or are you going to be critical of them because they also need to do all of those things? We urge the government to provide certainty, timeliness, predictability and clarity on the regulatory approval process for all energy pro projects. That's important for proponents, it's important for investors and it's important for the, as you point out, hundreds of thousands of Canadians who rely on this sector, which provides multiple benefits to multiple levels of government and raises the standard of living for all Canadians. And even just today, my colleague did say in the, in the House of Commons that they are embarking on yet more of a review of the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency and more of a review of the NEB, uh, of, 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 as they call it, a modernization mm -hmm. of the NEB. We do have a concern that that's a signal that there may be changes coming, they, there may be different measures, uh, there, there may be differences in what is required or differences on which decisions that need to be based on facts, evidence, consultation and uh, the broad public interest may yet change and we are concerned that that, is, uh, that causes instability and sure, uncertainty in a sector that's already fine, struggling. But surely you're not suggesting the NEB is functioning very well right now given that three people had to be pulled off a panel on their assessment of the Energy East pipeline. You, you can't say that there's 100% confidence in that process right, and so that you don't need to modernize it. So that's the panel that's been struck under the Liberal government's new changes to the regulatory process. That's the changes they made specific to Energy East. We would urge them to work with the NEB to strike that panel as soon as possible, get it back on track and get the process back on track for the proponents and for all of the Canadians okay. who are waiting for, for all Canadians who are waiting for a decision on Energy East. Decat Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about a project that will add about 5 million tons of carbon yes. dioxide. Uh, and the, the, one of the five, problems five, with 5 million tons a year. We should. That, a year, yes, that's yeah. right. And, and you see, there's a project that's actually not very far, another LNG project, which actually uses uh, uh, a newer technology. With this, this LNG, the Pacific Northwest project, the terminal itself, we're talking about an older technology that's, that 
is going to actually use natural gas to produce liquefied natural gas, mm -hmm. uh, while other newer technologies are actually allowing for a mix with hydroelectricity. So we're looking at the project that uh, will uh, add significantly to Canada's production of carbon dioxide of GHG, and uh, for, uh, that 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 I can't wait to see what the final report will say about this aspect and and the arbit arbitrage that you can actually find between different uh, different types of technology. But just to be clear, is the NDP fundamentally against this project getting the green light? The, uh, the Pacific Northwest, we have strong reservations. That, that doesn't mean that we are opposed to other projects uh, that involves the liquefied natural gas and the. CNDP has the same position as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I suspect you might be back tomorrow to talk about how this actually ended up. Jonathan Wilkinson, <laughs> Shannon Stubbs, and Guy Caron. Thank you all. Appreciate Thank you. it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.